Oh my goodness, a big budget action film and a family-based comedy. Oh, they're on big screens this week. And here to review Bullet Train and Easter Sunday, our film critics Pam Powell and Chuck Kaplinski. Okay, I'm super excited that Brad Pitt is back on the big screen. I am fingers crossed that this one is going to be a hit. Hmm. Chuck, tell me it is. It will be a hit. Uh -oh. It will make money. I don't but... think there's any question about that. But something odd happens in this movie that I don't think has ever happened in Brad Pitt's career. I found that he was completely miscast in this movie. This movie is what they use, and I'm going to use air quotes, high concept. Uh, it involves a bullet train, uh, which there it is. Wow, <laughs> don't blink, you'll miss it. It's leaving from Tokyo, and it's heading to Kyoto. And wouldn't you know it, there are five assassins on board. And Pitt's uh, code name is Ladybug, because he feels as though he has bad luck all the time. But his handler, played by Sandra Bullock, says, no, we're going to give you a good luck name. And all these five assassins are after this one briefcase, which contains $10 million, <laughs> and of course becomes much more complicated as we get the backstories of each one of these characters. And and then there's a fight, and then there's some, and then there's a fight, and then there's, and then there's another fight. There's a lot of, I'm telling you, I was telling Pam, this is the roomiest train ever invented in the history of traindom, because I'm telling you, they're doing things in these train cars I didn't think were possible. But there you go, there you go, I'm thinking too much. I'm not supposed to be thinking during this movie. This movie tries too hard. It tries too hard throughout, and so is Pitt. Pitt tries too hard, and I like the guy. I don't think I've ever seen a movie in him, that, a movie with him that I didn't like him in, but this one, he's trying too hard. He doesn't quite have the timing that's necessary. He's forcing jokes, and really, I think another problem is that the movie's just too darn long. Had this thing been 90 or 100 minutes, as opposed to two hours and 10, I don't think that I would have noticed certain things as long. But once you get distracted or bored, you start picking things apart, and. There were plenty of things to pick apart on Bullet Train, so I'm sure other people will like this. The guy who directed this also directed Deadpool 2. So if you liked that, you'll like this. No. If uh -oh. not, no. <laughs> no? Okay, so no, I liked you weren't Deadpool, a fan. Deadpool, and I see some similarities with the director and what he stylistically did. There's a little bit of a Quentin Tarantino feel to it Kinda. as well. Um, and, and the comedy just doesn't go over the top enough like Deadpool and Deadpool 2. Um, I found this to be something that derailed easily and quickly. Oh, oh look what she did. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very cute. Why well, you get the big box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so okay, skip it. skip it. What about Easter Sunday? Uh, this was just a lot of fun. It is ridiculous. It is silly. Mm -hmm. And it is fun. Joe Coy stars in this as Joe Valencia, a stand-up comic who is looking for the next big role of his career. While he is so focused on that career of his, he neglects his teenage son and his mother. Um, a lot of the stand-up goes around his mother, who is from the Philippines, and he uses that funny little accent to imitate her and gets a lot of laughs. This is all about his family as he takes his son for Easter Sunday, Sunday because he's been guilted into going back home to see his sisters and his <laughs> aunts and uncles and cousins. This is a crazy mess of a family. This is a crazy dysfunctional family, just like everybody else's. While it has a lot of the cultural aspects of the Filipino family, it also lets us connect with some of the craziness that we all experience. There you see his son, his teenage son, Brandon, Wordle, uh, not to be confused confused with Wordle, Chuck, that Thank I beat you, you at Chuck. today. <laughs> um, and this is one of my favorite scenes in the church as he's at the pulpit and he is giving the sermon. But that young boy gives us, I think, that grounded feeling that we need in this film because everybody else is super over the top and crazy. I had fun with this. I have a sense of humor. I like being lighthearted and entertained with crazy stuff. So it was fun. How about you, Chuck? Chuck? I like things that kind of make a little bit of sense, uh, <laughs> that don't go too far out of the boundaries of things. I didn't laugh once. <gasps> Not, not even once? Not even he once. Was crabby. I was crabby. I was not crabby. I have good taste. Uh, we <laughs> had we had an interview with Joe Coy. Actually, we did, but then I didn't because of a technical snafu. So Pam had an interview with Mr. Coy. He seems to be the nicest you know, in the world. You know, is that probably good, though, since you didn't like the movie? No, I can fake things. I faked it before. <laughs> Hello, here and other places. So, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I can do that. Yeah, it's no big deal. But, yeah, it was Pam's dream come true. My microphone did not work. Oh, so nuts. She had to do it, so hopefully we'll see that interview soon. Yes, yes, okay. very soon. It's okay. Well, very nice. And these are in theaters? Yes. Both of them are in theaters. Okay. Well, hey, what did, really quickly, what did you think of the news today that I saw that Batgirl or whatever <laughs> got the cut? 
that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Chuck. That take is, that, one. We, that story is just developing. There's yes. a lot we don't know about there. I've heard that the film was irredeemable as far as being so bad. I've heard that they've done this Ooh. because there's a new regime there, and they're looking to cut costs, so they'll take a tax loss on that to the tune of about a hundred million dollars. <gasps> But there are people, I'm sure, digging into this. There's much more to that story oh, than we've goodness. seen already. So check back on that. Interesting. That is interesting. And we that do is. cover that a little bit on our podcast. Yes, that you we can do. To okay, yeah. well, wonderful. Well, for more reviews and witty banter, you can check out the Real Talk with Chuck and Pam YouTube channel for video reviews, their segments, or their podcast. Um, all of those links will be at ciliving.tv as well as um, a link to their Facebook page because you never know what fun surprises just happen to pop up.